Hello, I'm uh, Mark Taifar and uh, welcome to the uh, module called Plan, Do, Check and Act, a very interesting uh, module. Don't forget that if you have any questions or comment, to use the comment box. Let's get started. Um, the topics for this module would be uh, using Deming applied to, to 20,000. We'll be talking about audits and reviews and we'll be looking at the service management system as it's applied. The, the element of establish and improve uh, in the standard says, first of all, you need to establish the quality management system and you need to improve it. The first part is to define the scope. And, and let me try to give you an example here on, on the scope. Um, people sometimes have, have problem with this. Uh, a scope is a simple uh, sentence or a few sentence which is simple and clear, which defines what is going to be the area that you're going to provide services on. So uh, you may say we're going to provide to customer number one because that's the name of the customer, uh, a, 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 a series of services which are going to be written in service agreement. So something of a simple text. And this is something that you would need to kind of decide at the beginning before you start doing your plan. Once the scope is defined, then you would en enter the service management plan based on that scope. And then you would include organizational name provided, providing services and service delivered so that at the end you would have a, a, a sentence or a very small paragraph that would define the scope and that would define the area of your plan. And then you would provide for geographic location, customer location, the technology you'll be using. And if you need more information on this, I invite you to consult the handouts uh, under ISO IAC 20000-3. What is in the plan? The plan, as I said to you before, has to be simple. It has to be organized, but it, it doesn't have to be complicated. Uh, I'm not saying that you can write it on a piece of napkin, of paper napkin. I'm saying that you need to have a service management objective. It needs to be what are your policies, what standard or regulatory requirements are you obliged to do in the area you are operating, what are the contractual obligations that are in place, who has the authority for what, what are the responsibilities and what are the roles and which resource will be you be using and how will the interface between the design and the transition uh, will be done and what process you will have, what type of risk you will manage, what type of technology you will use, and what type of measuring and reporting uh, you, will be, uh, you will be doing. Under measuring and reporting, I invite you again to do simple measuring and to do simple reporting. I've worked with one organization. That organization had, I think it was like a 35 page report on a monthly basis. There were so many people doing reporting, they didn't have time to deliver proper IT services to the customer. So I invite you to review the standard and to look at service reporting and inspire yourself from that and do it in a simple way. So this would be your plan. As you can see, the plan could be maybe in five, six pages, seven pages. It does not have to be long. And I certainly suggest to you that it's going to be to write it in a simple and concise way. Once you've established and you've established, you'll need to implement. Our implement is related to the word do. So as you implement the service management system, you'll have to provide for resources. Now that you have a plan, you need to find those resources. You need to put in operation the budget. You need to assign people to the activities of the process. You need to manage the authorities and the responsibilities. And you need to be sure that the people know their role and they're doing it. So as I said to you before, 
when you did the plan, now you're going to operate the plan and you're going to continue to identify and manage risk. You're going to manage and maintain policies, plans, and maintain the procedures. And you're going to manage the service management process. You're going to monitor as you need to do and report on the service management activity. And you'll need to provide for a progress report on how things are doing. So as you can see, now that you've planned, now you're doing the application, the operationalism of the plan in the do section. In establish and improve the service management system, the third part, the check part, you're going to be monitoring and review. First part is internal audit. Internal audit are um, audits which are done at plan interval and they are following a documented procedures. And they are done not to uh, check in a minute way what is being done, but to ensure that the service management system is fulfilling its requirement. Understand me well here. I'm not talking about checking small little things and saying, yeah, it's done, it's not done, it's done, it's not done. I'm talking here as internal audits are done. They're done to ensure that the service management system is fulfilling its requirement. They are done to specify that there are results and those results are, don't contain any non-conformities. If there are things that are not conforming, if there are non-conformities, they need to be communicated. Once they're communicated, management has to prioritize them and management has to assign responsibility to some people to solve those non-conformities. So that the internal audit will serve as a way of throwing a red flag, if I may use that example, that some corrective action needs to be done and some follow-up activities need also to be done. The reason you're doing them, it's because your service management system has been established at a certain level and now you see that that level is not met. So you need to be able to correct and bring back the level of effectiveness to its proper level by doing corrective actions. So in assessment and audit, we need to realize that you could be doing self-assessment. You could be doing also internal audit. I've just exposed you to that concept. There also is a vendor audit. A vendor audit is, um, is an audit that is being done on you um, and because you are the vendor. And there are also external audits which could be done either on you, on your organization, or that you could be doing to other organizations. So that you have on top internal audits and you have on the bottom other types of audits that can be done. So for monitor and review the service management system, you need to do management review. The standard says you will do management review. It says top management will ensure that the service management system is suitable, suitable to the customer needs, suitable to the customer requirement, and also that it is effective. So in order to do that, top management will do in their management review uh, verification that the resources are properly utilized. They will look at trends. They will look at satisfaction, either internal or external, and they will also look at service performance. So now that top management has ensured the sustainability of the service management system, it will also use some sources of input, customer feedback, performance conformity, resource and capability, either the forecast or the current, risk, audit results, any action or any improvement of opportunities will be done there. So the management review is a very vital element. Now, the standard, and I don't always agree with the standard, but that's okay. Uh, the standard says that it has to be done at least annually. Uh, I find that in some cases, it can be done 
uh, more often. I would say to you that the rule of thumb is that top management should review the service management system at least annually, but also if there are major events that are happening, uh, uh, major incidents, we'll be talking about that later, change of, uh, change of customer, big change in the organization will vouch for a, man, a new management review. So we must maintain and improve the service management system. This is the part that we're calling ACT. There must be a policy for continual improvement. That policy needs to be talking about preventative action. And as we're talking about management of improvement, we will have some elements of input. We will have elements that of priorities, of decision criteria. We will have improvements that should affect the quality, the, va the value, the capability uh, of the service management system. And we need to document those revisions where they are necessary. And we need to implement that against the tar on some targets and correct those targets if they are not uh, proper, if they are not properly done. So management of improvement is, is an important part, as you can see. As a way of um, synthesizing all the information that uh, you have learned uh, up to now, uh, I invite you to look at the graphic uh, that is provided in the download section and that you will see that on the left-hand side, in red, there are what is the business needing and, and a bit of a review of the elements we've discussed. In the blue section, in the middle section, you will see the connection with the IT directors and what the IT organization needs to do and the type of feedback that will be moving with the arrows uh, moving to one another uh, so I again invite you to look at this and that should be helping you with the slides to make a global picture of what we've discussed uh, up to now. If you have any questions, uh, please use the question in the comment box. Thank you for listening and uh, see you next time. Bye-bye.